Code expense is high. Today we're going to talk about another array object method, which is the map method. First, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Well, let's see an example for why will you need to use the map method. So I have here an array of numbers, one, two, three, four, and I want to get the square number of each of these numbers. And also I want to save them in another array instead of the old original array. And also I want the position of the square numbers uh, be the same thing as the original number. So for example, I have here one, I want then to multiply one by itself and then get one. The same thing for two, multiply by itself and get four. Then three times three, nine, and then four times four, 16. So you can achieve this using a full loop. So you can just go and create your numbers array, then your squared array, set it to an empty array. And then you want to use a for loop to loop over your numbers array. So I'm going to start from index zero because one has the index zero. And then I want to stop when I is less than numbers that length. The numbers that length here is four, one, two, three, four. Now all I need to do is I'm going to go and use squared with index I equals numbers I times numbers with index I. So when this runs for the first time, the first iteration, this is what's going to happen. So squared with index zero is going to be equal to numbers with index zero times numbers with index zero, which is basically one times one. And then the result is going to be one. So this means that the value of the first element in our squared array is going to be one. And then I'm going to increment the index by one. So now it's going to be one and the result is going to be four. Then increment the index again by one. So it's going to be two and I'm going to get nine on the third position. Then increment I by one again, it's going to be now three and then increment the I again, and it's going to be four and this time four less than four. That's false. Four is not less than four. So this will stop our loop. And that's all we need. So now the squared will be populated with one, four, nine, sixteen. the squared numbers of these numbers here. Now to achieve the same thing we're using a map method, you want to go for the syntax, you want to go and call map on your array. In this case, it's going to be numbers. And then all you need to achieve the same result, you want to pass in a function is going to calculate the squared number of each of these numbers here. Well, because this function here is passed to another function, this function is called a callback function. Let's talk about the callback function. So you want to go and create a function and then you can use any name you want, as long as it is not a reserved name. Well, for the parameters of the function here, so the first parameter is going to be the value. So for example, one, two, three, four. Then the second element is going to be index. So in this case, zero, one, two, three. And the third parameter is going to be the array. So the array you call on your map method. For example, if I call map on numbers, the array here is going to be numbers. If I call map on square, the array here is going to be the array squared. So why do you need this? Sometimes when you don't have your map called in the same scope as your numbers array or square array, then you need to use a third parameter here or argument to get access to your array. Well, then inside your function, you can do any logic, any calculations you want to do, but at the end, you must use a return statement. So you have to return a value that's going to be pushed into a new array because map doesn't change your original array. So for example, if I called map on the numbers array, these numbers here or these values here will not be changed. The change will happen, but saved into a new array. Well, now let's go and use the map method to get the same results we have got using the for loop. So I'm going to create my numbers array. Then I'm going to create a function called sq for square. And then I'm going to go and pass in the value and the index and the array. Well, because I don't need the index and the array, I'm just going to go and remove them and only use the value. You only use the first parameter. Well, don't get me wrong here because sometimes if you need 
the array, you can't just go and use the array only here inside the parentheses and call this array and that's going to be the array. So you still need to use the value parameter and the index parameter then the array. Then you can access the array parameter although if you don't need the value and index inside your code here. So let's go now and return value times value to calculate the square number of each of these numbers here. So now all I need to do is to go and create my squared variable that's going to be an array because map returns an array and then pass in sq to my function or to my method map without invoking the function using the parentheses. So just sq and map will call sq on each of these uh, numbers here or on each of these elements here. So when I take a look on my squared array after this code runs, we will see these numbers here or the square number of each of these numbers. Just the same thing we got using a for loop. So now what's happening here, map is going to call sq in the first element. So one is going to be the value here. Then one times one is going to be one. Then it's going to go to the second element two, the value is going to be two now, two times two, so we're going to get four and etc. Well now if you don't want to create a function then pass in that function as a callback to your map method, you can just go and use an align function. So you just need to go and use that map and then pass in your anonymous function, then the first parameter is always going to be the element and then return value times value and you're going to get the same results. Well you can also use an array function instead of a ordinary function or a callback function. So you're going to call map and then pass in an array function again the value or the first parameter is going to be the elements in your array and then you're going to return value times value and then get the same results. Well, if you're familiar with uh, array functions, when your array function, uh, all it does is returning some value, you can just go and get rid of these curly braces here and also the return keyword here. So this is what our code will look like after removing the curly braces and return keyword here. So value, an array function, value times value. And of course, we're going to get the same results as before. And now you can see here that instead of one, two, three, four, five lines of code, now with just two lines of code, we got the same results. And still, this code here is more readable and easy to read than this one here. And now, sometimes you call the map method, then pass in your function and do all the logic, all the calculations, but you forget to return a value from your function. And that's going to result with a new array populated with undefined. So we have here four elements. We're going to get four undefined values inside my new array. So always make sure that your function returns a value when using the map method. Well, now, so far, we've seen that the map method can take in a callback function and also can take in an align function where the first parameter is the element in your array, the second is the index and the third is the array. Well now the last thing we're going to talk about the map method is the second parameter that you can pass in alongside with the callback function and that's the this argument. So the argument here is going to be replacing the this keyword inside your map method. So what I mean here, let's see an example. Well, if you have seen my previous video about the for each method, you can just stop watching this video because I'm going to do the same talk about this argument as I did with the for each. Well, if you haven't seen that video, I have here an array numbers and then if I call the map and then I pass in the line function, but now I'm going to console log the this keyword here. Now this here will always refer to an object, sometimes it's going to refer to undefined, but most of the time it's going to refer to an object. When this is called inside the function, this will always refer to the global object. And now because I'm running this code using a browser, so the global object here is going to be the window object. 
So on the first iteration here, I'm going to get window, the second iteration, the third and the fourth also. Well, if I want to change the this here to refer to any other object rather than my global object here, all I need to do is to pass in that object as the second parameter to my map method. So now if I pass this object here as the second parameter and take a look on the console, instead of getting the global object window, I'm going to get the object itself here. And I think that's all you need to know about the map method. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and see you in a new tutorial. Take care.